My name's Christian, and this is Code and Stuff, a place where I write code and I do stuff. In today's video, building a ChatGPT Slack bot using the Slack Bolt app framework. I'm impatient, and I don't want to wait for Slack to launch a GPT feature. So my goals, with an app mention of ChatGPT, get it to respond, give it access to threads, and make it a member of my Slack workspace. All the code for this project and a deploy to Heroku button are available in GitHub, link in the description. Now let's get started. First, I set up an OpenAI API key and a Slack bot in my workspace. This is boring and full of secrets, but instructions are available in the repo. Let's get started with a quick thread reply bot to make sure all the keys are working. For this, I'm gonna add a handler for the app mention event. Let's log the body and respond with the save function. Over in Slack, I'm gonna give at ChatGPT a quick hello. And it looks like it's working. A quick look at the log shows that messages come in with a text field and a TS ID, as well as some rich text stuff that I don't need to worry about. I'd prefer to have the bot respond in a thread, so let's update the say call to include the parent message ID as the TS value. Now that it's responding in a thread, let's get it wired up to ChatGPT. OpenAI has a JavaScript SDK available, making it easy to programmatically interact with ChatGPT. To begin with, I'm gonna just forward the exact text from Slack over to ChatGPT. Let's create a new client instance and call it. Then grab the response message and send it right back into the thread. Now that it's running, let's learn about Wombats. This is great, but it's missing some context. If I ask it to summarize the thread, it doesn't have any idea what I'm talking about it doesn't have access to the contents of that thread. So let's feed it some threads. The Slack Conversations API gives us access to the replies in a thread with the conversations.replies method, which takes in a timestamp ID and a channel, giving us back all of the messages in that thread. To give the thread content to ChatGPT, let's take a look at the messages data model. There are four roles, system, user, assistant, and function. We're not gonna deal with functions here, but the other three could be important. Without roles defined, ChatGPT won't know who said what. System messages are where your prompts come in. Talk like a cowboy, be a helpful lab assistant, etc. Assistant messages are replies we've received from ChatGPT, so it knows where it responded. User messages are the messages from people interacting with the AI. We've only ever sent messages as users, but it's important for ChatGPT to know its role. With that out of the way, let's do some mapping and send the thread to ChatGPT. I wrote a little helper to get us the user ID of the bot. Now we can use that helper to map all of the messages from the thread, knowing which role it should have. All we need to do is send those to the completion call and we're ready. Let's ask it again for a summary of the thread. And there it is. All right, until this point, we've waited until all of the async tasks are done before responding to the user. What if it crashes? What if it just takes a long time? To address this, let's change the way things run. First, let's tell the user that we're thinking about their message. Then, when we have a result, let's edit that thinking message and give the real response. To do this, we'll call say right at the top. Then we'll use chat.update to update the message's content when we have a response. To handle errors more gracefully, let's wrap parts that could fail in a try catch and let the user know that something went wrong if we ever hit an error. Now we have a much better experience. When I ask how much caffeine is healthy, I'll get a thinking and then a response. If I ask a follow-up, like how many Red Bulls is that? It continues the thread and gives us a reply. Let's go. In summary, in just a few lines of JavaScript, we've been able to wire ChatGPT into a Slack channel. It's able to participate in a thread's conversation and lets you know when things go wrong. There's way more content in the repo, including deployment configuration, direct messaging, and access to system prompts. Check it out in the link in the description. On a final note, in making a video, I'm trying something completely new. Let me know how it went by doing all that normal YouTube stuff, liking, subscribing, and leaving comments. Your feedback will help me share more things in the future. This has been Code and Stuff. Thank you for watching.